Okay, so this video is going to be over Robertsonian translocations. So they usually occur between 13, 14, 15, and 21, and 22, right? And they happen between acrocentric chromosomes. So what is an acrocentric chromosome? It's this. It's where you have a short arm, a short P arm, and a very long Q arm, right? So what's important about an acrocentric chromosome is the fact that in the P arm of acrocentric chromosomes, you have non-essential genes. So this means that you can have this Robertsonian translocation without affecting the person, right? Because all you need are the Q arms. You don't need the P arms to be healthy for acrocentric chromosomes. So what do I mean by this? Well, what can happen is you can have a normal dad and a normal mom, right? Or I'm sorry, just a normal um, pair, right? of chromosomes for 14 and 21. And so what can, ha what can happen is you can have a normal 14 and a normal 21, but what can happen between these two is that the P arms, right, the, the one that's in red, are lost and only the Qs are brought together, right? So the 14Q and the 21Q are brought together into one chromosome, right? Um, and so what happens is this person will actually be completely healthy with this genotype, but the problem is they can pass this on to their children and their children are at a, at a higher risk of getting some sort of illness, right? Or, or inheriting some sort of negative gene phenotype. So this person, right, they only need the Q arms to be healthy, right? Because the P arms have non-essential genes for acrocentric chromosomes. So you have your 14Q, right, 14Q over here. So that means two 14Qs, so they're healthy in that department. And over here you have two 21Qs. So this person is going to be phenotypically normal. The only problem is that they can pass it on to their kids. So going on to uh, an actual example of this problem. So you have your dad and mom, right? So you have um, your dad who has the Robertsonian translocation and your mom who's completely normal. So let's go through each example of what the dad could actually give to the mom, uh, actually just have uh, in terms of ga gamete variation, right? So the dad can actually, first of all, have a normal gamete variety, right? So they can have 114 and 121, completely normal because both the P and Qs are present. And then what can, you, what can happen is you can have just this one, right? 14Q and 21Q, same thing, just the 21, just the 14. And over here, what can happen is you can have one normal one, 114, right? And then one of these Robertsonian translocations, over here, same thing like this one, except it's with 21. And that's the complete variation, right? So an easy way to remember that is you can have just a normal one and then one of each, right? So one, oh, this one will come down, this one will, will be over here, this one. And then at the end, you'll have one normal one and then one Robertsonian translocation. Over here, one normal one, one Robertsonian translocation. So now combining it with the mom's genotype, we can see the phenotype of the offspring, the different um, variety. And one more thing before we go through this, to determine if the child will be viable, we have to look at these three trisomies, right? And these ones are the only ones that are viable. Trisomy 13, 18, and 21, right? So anything, for example, if you have trisomy 14, that will not be viable. And then so to just to clarify, viable just means that you have to have two 14 cues, right, and two 21 cues. So let's go through the example. So for vi for the first one, right? So we have we have this gamete that we inherited from the dad. So we have 14 and 21 from the dad, and so the mom's always going to be the 14 p and q and 21 p and q. So now we just all we have to look for for viability is just look for the two 14 cues and the two 21 cues, right? So we look. So we have 14, like one 14 Q and two 14 Qs, right? So two 14 Qs overall. So it's healthy on the 14 uh, chromosomes, right? And then over here, two 21 Qs. So once again, healthy. So this child is going to be not only viable, but healthy also. Over here, we have a viable, and viable just means that they're going to live past birth. Um, for example, for each one of these, uh, the life expectancy is shorter for 13 and 18 because uh, people with Down syndrome can actually live a pretty long lifetime. But in general, it just means that they can live past birth and maybe a, a, a few months to uh, multiple years. So the other ones, like for example, trisomy 14 or anything else, they can't live. They're not viable, meaning they can't live after birth. So for this one, 
we have the next yammy coming down, and then we have the mom's healthy genotype. And so now we just look for the Qs, right? So we have 114Q and then 214Qs, right? So healthy for uh, chromosome 14. Over here, 21Q and 21Q, right? So notice how we're missing the P arms, right? But that's okay because all we need to be viable are the Q arms for acrocentric chromosome. So we have 1, 2 for 14 and then 1, 2 for 21. So viable and healthy. However, in this case, the child will be a carrier, right, for this Robertsonian translocation. So moving on, we have this one, right? Um, so once again, just count 14, right? And then, uh, so we don't have any other 14 cues, right? So just one 14 Q. And then for 21, we have 21, 21. So two 21 cues. So the um, chromosome 21 is normal. However, we only have one, right? So that would be monosomy 14, but that's not viable, right? Because these are the only ones that are viable. There's no monosomies for autosomal chromosomes that are viable. So this offspring will actually not be viable, right? And so for this one, a similar effect, except for the 21Q, right? Because we have one two for 14Q, but only one 21Q, right? So once again, not viable because trisomy 21 is viable, but not monosomy, right? Monosomy 21 is not viable. So moving on to the second to the last one. So we have um, this genotype from the dad and the phenotype from the mom. So we count it up. So 114Q, 214Qs, and then 314Qs, right? So we have trisomy 14 and then one and two, two 21Qs, right? So we look again, right? So tri is trisomy 14 visible on the viable list? And no, it's not. Only trisomy 13, 18, and 21 are visible. So that means that this child will not be viable. And then finally, for our final genotype, we have the genotype from the mom and dad. And we look and we count it up. And so we have 14, right? 114, 214, so 214. And then 121Q, 221Q, and 321Q, right? So we have three 21Qs. And then we look one last time over here. And so that actually is viable, right? So try something 21 is viable. And so this child will be viable. However, this child won't be necessarily healthy because they will be afflicted with Down syndrome. So in common test questions are just, they'll ask you to do this and they'll ask for how many children are viable, right? And so it'd be one, two, three children out of six total are viable, therefore 50% are viable, right? And another thing they could ask is how many children we might have, or what is the probability out of viable children that you have Down syndrome, right? So that, that question, the answer wouldn't just be one out of six, right? Because you, have, you do have a one out of six probability of having a, ch a child with Down syndrome, but that's out of all the possibilities. If they ask how many children might have D Down syndrome out of the viable children, then it would only be out of three viable children. And so it would be one out of three, right? So I hope that helped and thanks for watching.